the uh, the club has a clock that's set up on the top left. It's it started manually by I think a remote, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's not linked at all. Those clocks I don't think have any kind of interface that you can work with with a computer to manually trigger it. Anyways, but that clock was uh, purchased uh, last year. I don't remember how much it was, but five hundred dollars. And so uh, if you have a question on that, and uh, I can get put you in contact with the guy who bought it. But it's worked out really well. The runners, I can see it from a good ways off. But the cones were purchased uh, online. Not sure exactly where. Um, the ribbon was purchased. Uh, uh, that one can't answer you. It's online. Okay. We might have been local. Any idea how much these were? I do not. Okay. So anyway, you can find the these cones. were twenty-five a piece. Twenty-five dollars a piece. Uh, I feel some sprinkles, so we're gonna ha hurry. But uh, the ribbon itself, I think it comes in six hundred feet length, or whatever it was. Pretty long. A hundred feet. A hundred feet. Uh, and so we and that we actually doubled them up. But what we maybe should uh, do next time is make the length of the finish line shoot twice as long, because we have a barcode scanner. When someone comes through, we try to scan their bib. It kind of helps prevent you know having someone write down the number and then put a sticky pad or something on our desk and then manually enter it in. We uh, we use the barcode scanner to to pretty much eliminate as many uh, you know, human interactions as we can with the system. And so. Um, Anyways, the runners come through. Here's the finish line right here. We set our antennas up uh, always about six inches a foot behind the line because when the beam comes out, it's, it's kind of wide. And so what we found is about six inches back, it actually reads pretty much the moment they hit the line. Uh, you want to have your shoe tags to where it's facing the antenna. That's a direct read, pretty much a zero-degree angle, and that's the best angle you can have. Uh, bib tags and other tagging methods, you know, the best method you can have is about a 45-degree angle, and that's, that's okay, but it's not ideal. And so with this setup here, we get very reliable reads. Anytime we see someone go by and they weren't picked up at all, we have a pretty good clue that they are either a bandit runner or we're not wearing the tags at all. Today was 100% read. Today was 100% read rate, yeah. And so uh, that's what we've come to, to, to expect when we have pretty much five redundant uh, read zones they have to run through. That they, each antenna really should have a near 100% read rate. And so the first antenna, if they don't get it, it's almost impossible to imagine someone going through with a tag by all five antennas not getting them. Our second antenna here is hooked up to the TR-200. Last week we found out that the data cable, it was an old old kind of rough looking data cable anyways, well it must not have been good because we noticed that runners weren't getting picked up until a little later. Well last week's, last week's race we timed the entire thing not knowing until the end that it was just the TR-200 that was doing all the reads. And so, uh, so that, even though it's a backup system, is strong enough that you may not even notice if your main reader is going out. Uh, so uh, when the runners come through, their picture is taken automatically. You could have the flash pop up if you want to actually make it a little bit more of a show, you know, and actually make it see the flash firing off. But basically, it takes the picture. It's, it doesn't move the pictures to the camera. It stores them on the camera, uh, and then you can take them off later. We do that so that uh, it's not going to be hammering the, the computer nonstop, pushing you know large files across. But as the runner comes through, they see their name and their time um, for however long you determine. Um, we have it set for four seconds. After it shows their name and their time, if no one else is finishing, it'll loop through and show the existing finishers. So the goal with that is to sort of help keep people away from our finish line, saying, hey, how'd my son do, or how'd I do? And so I don't think we had a single person today come up and ask, how'd, how'd I do? One. one person? Okay. So one is better than what we usually get. <laughs> so. Um, but anyway, that was our entire setup. I'll let you see one final thing here. We got one main power cord coming all the way to the finish line. It plugs into the power strip down there. The battery backup plugs in the power strip. We have only the reader in these three plug-ins here that work for the battery. Uh, everything else is okay if the system, if we lose power. But the, the reader, you want it to stay powered on. So it's plugged into the battery side of the, the UPC. Uh, but here's our reader. It's got its four. And t uh, cables here for the antennas. The TR200 sitting here on the table. It's antenna going over there. We got our printer. I think this was bought for like $85 online. Yes. Uh, the laptops I bought for around $450. The camera was about $350. Uh, I bought this on eBay for uh, $100.